So next I will discuss uh, another experiment. So experiment 2 uh, on prism basically. So measurement of measurement of angle of minimum deviation of a given prism for a particular wavelength. So say uh, sodium D line, so basically if you use sodium source, so you will get yellow light, so it tell call it is a D line. So for it has particular wavelength, so 500, 5893 uh, angstrom. So for this wavelength, what is the angle of minimum deviation of a prism? So that we would like to find out experimentally. Okay. So basically, uh, then you have to you have to put your prism on the prism table. Okay. So from collimeter, the parallel waves will fall on the prism. Okay. So as we know that this you will get minimum deviation position when this refracted ray inside the prism will be parallel to the to the to the base of the prism okay so after putting the prism we have to we have to we have to change the we have to change the incident angle rotating the rotating the prism rotating the prism so we have we will change the incident angle and look at the refracted emerging refracted rays and then we will see that that this is the deviation, this is the deviation. So, minimum deviation means if, if this is the position for minimum deviation, so if I increase or decrease the incident angle, then this deviation will be higher than this one. So that means this reflected uh, refracted rays, emerging ray, it will all the time for higher or lower incident angle, it will it will rotate this side, it will move this side, okay? It will move this side. So when I will rotate the prism clockwise, also it will move this side, or if I rotate anti-clockwise. So, also it will move this side. So, this position we have to find out first. So, that is the minimum uh, deviation position and then after finding out the minimum deviation position, so we will put telescope here, we will put telescope here and take the reading. If take the reading in vernier 1 and vernier 2, if this reading is say theta 1 and then then we'll take the reading of the reading of the direct ray, direct ray, putting the telescope here. Then I cannot get direct ray if I don't remove this prism table, uh, prism. So I remove the prism, then I will get direct reading. Okay. So then, if it is theta two, then difference between theta one and theta two is basically this one. So this will be the angle of minimum deviation okay so first again for any experiment you have to find out the uh, you have to find out the um, vernier constant for both vernier's so I, I am showing the same page okay already i have explained so for for our case the vernier constant is 20 second for vernier 1 as well as for vernier 2 Okay, so that we have to note down. Then we have to go for the data recording for minimum deviation position. So first I have to set, I have to get minimum 
deviation position. So, I have taken the same prism. So, this is the apex and this is the base. Okay, this is the base. You can guess from here. So, this is the collimeter. Okay, this is the collimeter. So, you can see this collimeter and the base of the prism almost is a, is a parallel. Okay. So, this just uh, from the figure you can guess, you can guess. Uh, so, I will put prism like this, I will put prism like this. Okay. So, this base is almost parallel to the, uh, to the collimeter of incident rays. So, basically then uh, the parallel rays from collimeter will fall on the refracted uh, surface. Okay. So, this I will I will set this way put here. Okay. 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 So, now uh, now I will I will change the I will change the angle of let me just uh, yes let me look at the so so where i will look for the emergent ray so you know that this the this is the normal to this and then rays are coming so this is the angle of incidence then it should be inside so this is the ray is coming so inside it 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 will be parallel to this base when it is at minimum deviation position okay so and here so always these rays whatever this incident rays when refracted always it bends towards the base so this is my base so this refracted ray it is towards the base so i have to look in this angle and try to find out the uh, minimum deviation not minimum deviation so this refracted rays emergent rays i have to uh, i will rotate this uh, So, it depends on practice, you know. I can direct, I can see. It's okay. This, so, this is the normal the surface. I will take this. that height is okay, I do not think I have to put slightly height up. Uh, can you put, put up light, switch up light. Ah, I got it. Ah, we got it. Ah. Okay, so I got it, but it took time. So what I will do? I will see the. Yes, so. I got the uh, emergent rays, okay, deviated rays, okay. So, this is the direct rays. So, after refraction, I am getting this way deviated ray in this direction, okay. So, but it is not the minimum deviation position. So, I have to set it, okay. So, I, so what I have to do? I will just change the angle of incident angle. So, it is going back 
and if I change the other direction, it is going other direction. Okay, it's coming back. So I have to I have to set the telescope. Okay, so it seems that's the minimum. So now if I rotate this way, it is going back. If I rotate this way, also it is going back. So minimum deviation position. I have to so actually one should lock it and use it for okay so and this also one can lock it and you can use the to find out the so fine screw you can use for for locating exact minimum deviation position yes i think so so this is the minimum deviation position if i change the angle either increase the incident angle or decrease the incident angle so all the time this uh, refracted rays, this outgoing rays, it is moving in this direction, okay. So, uh, I set the telescope at the minimum deviation position, then at this position, I have to note down the data, right. I have to note down the data. So, so again this data for minimum deviation. Vernier number, Vernier 1, Vernier 2, then for uh, again generally we take for each case 3 observation, okay. like earlier I have shown you, uh, so Vernier 1 and this Vernier 2, okay. so observation 1, what is the reading here? One should note down main scale reading, vernier scale reading, and then find the total. Then take the reading from vernier 2. So, observation 1. So, take the reading. Okay. Then again try to adjust it. Again, you try to adjust it. Okay. Minimum deviation position and okay check it okay and then arbitrarily we will we'll again take the reading we will take the reading okay set again the minimum deviation position take the reading uh, second set of reading second set of reading okay from vernier 1 second set of reading vernier 2 second set of reading okay Similarly, third set of reading one can take, third set of reading one can take. Okay. So, this is the procedure to take the reading, taking reading is not difficult, so one should take. Now, reading at the direct position of the telescope, okay. So, now what I have to do, I will take out the prism from here. So, I should not this Vernier scale should not move, okay. So, I will keep it tightened the prism table only I will I will lose this telescope one and rotate it carefully so that it should not uh, other one should not rotate carefully and come to the direct position, okay. Come to the direct position, yes. Yes, and tighten it, tighten it and use the fine screw, use the fine screw, okay, and make it coincide with the cross wire, okay. Now, this is the position and for this position, direct position, again, you take the reading from Vernier 1 and Vernier 2, or set 1. Okay. Okay. 
note down the reading and then again you adjust arbitrarily again you set at this direct position set second set okay to minimize the error second set then third set okay then again take the difference of these two so this is the direct and that was the uh, deviated one and that deviation one it, uh, it was the minimum deviation okay so i have two reading now if i take difference of these two reading then i will get the uh, this angle of angle of minimum deviation so theta 1 and theta 2 take difference so i will get basically one data second reading third then this again six reading i will get and this more or less again you should check they will have only difference in in second or or minutes and then take average of the six data so that will be the your minimum deviation position okay so uh, so this way one can uh, measure one can measure the minimum deviation of a pigeon for a particular wavelength so now third experiment determination of refractive index of the material of a given pigeon for a particular wavelength of light okay so working formula mu refractive index is equal to sin a plus delta m by 2 sin a by 2 okay so so this is the working formula for this experiment to find out the refractive index now to get the refractive index so what i have to know i have to know the angle of the prism and also i have to know the minimum deviation of the prism okay angle of the prism it does not depend on the wavelength of the light but minimum deviation angle of minimum deviation it depends on the wavelength so that's why this mu refractive index or n earlier i have used n so here also you can use n anyway so i have used mu here so so this refractive index is a function of wavelength so that's why we have written for a particular wavelength of light in this case the sodium d1 line and wavelength is known to us so for this wavelength what is the refractive index okay so this is the working formula so experimentally we have to measure the angle of the pg and angle of the minimum deviation okay so measure a following the experiment one already we have done the experiment okay you have data or do it measure the minimum angle of minimum deviation following the experiment two just i described okay then use this to calculate mu okay so that will be your refractive index now error calculation because here ready made formula we are using working formula so what is the error most probable error percentage error one should calculate okay so here mu equal to this so del mu by mu equal to you know this if you take log in both side log mu equal to log of this plus log of this so then differentiate log of this means del mu by mu okay and log of this means 1 by this and this differentiation of this one okay so 1 by this and differentiation of this one is cos so it will be cot it will be cot a plus delta m by 2 now for this part so that is delta a by 2 plus delta del of del m by 2 del of del m by 2 okay 
plus this part. So, 1 by sin a by 2 into this del of this means cos a by 2, cos by sin. So, this is a cot a by 2 and for this part del a by 2. So, this is the uh, del mu by mu equal to this. Okay. So, a and del m value is known to us. Now, what is what is del a and del a, del of del m? So, that is you know the least count of the instrument. Recall that when we measured this, uh, when we measured this uh, angle of prism, so we have taken two reading theta 1 and theta 2. Difference of theta 1 and theta 2 was this 2a. So, basically 2a equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. Okay. So, 2 of del a equal to del theta 1 and del theta plus del theta 2 means 2 del theta because list count are same for both cases. So, del a equal to del theta equal to 1 vernier constant. So, what is the vernier constant in radial? Here you have to use in radial. Okay. Similarly, for del m, del m also how we got is the again we have taken two reading theta 1 and theta 2. So, difference of theta 1 and theta 2. So, del of del m equal to del theta 1 plus del theta 2 means 2 del theta. So, del of del m equal to basically 2 times of 2 times of vernier constant least count. Okay. Whereas, for A it is 1 times of vernier constant. Why? So, that I explained here. Okay. So, del A and del of del M is, is known to you and other A and del M is known to you. So, put here you will find out del mu by mu into 100. So, that will give you percentage error. Okay. So, so far whatever we have discussed, so how to measure the angle of prism, how to measure the angle of minimum deviation and then we can calculate the refractive index of the material of the prism for a particular uh, wavelength of light of course. Okay. So, I think I will stop here. Thank you for your attention.